Hello, everyone. We get to consider today Numbers chapter 16. But before we do, take a look at this phrase. Have you heard it before? No justice, no peace. It could very be easily considered the mantra <laughs> of our age, I guess. You hear it all the time. No justice, no peace. Take a look at Numbers chapter 16, verse 20. The Bible speaks of justice. Justice and only justice you shall follow, that you may live and inherit the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Justice and only justice you shall follow. Does the Bible care about justice? We talk about mercy a lot. The law is full of the mercy of God. We see it. Ah, it's just so rich. Every time I read the law, Deuteronomy, Exodus, I see the mercy of God everywhere, his care for those who have nothing. And I also see his justice. And it is through justice that God pours out his mercy. God is giving the people, mercifully giving the people the land through their display of God's justice. We care about justice. In this societal mantra, there is a care for justice. And the Bible teaches us that our desire, look, we want justice, don't we? We care about justice, don't we? And we have an innate sense that without justice, there can really be no mercy. There can be no true peace. Or actually, to put it more correctly, justice alone cannot produce peace. You need mercy to go along with justice to have peace. To put it theologically correctly. All right? Don't let that confuse you. But let me throw up, throw up some of these uh, sayings that will look to go along with this society's mantra that testifies to the creator who is a God of justice. The fact that everybody cares about justice in the world, the fact that you look for somebody to blame even, what is this idea of wanting to find out who is guilty or who's to blame for whatever problem, whether it's inside your home or in society? It's a cry for justice and it declares it proclaims it's a sermon regarding the creator who is a god of justice it testifies to the fact that the god who created us is the god of justice who created us with an innate sense of fairness and justice the one who created us is the foundation of that justice so let's see I want to take us through a few of these sayings and, and consider uh, the depth of meaning behind some of these. We just went over this one. No justice, no peace. Let's see what I have, what else I have for you. This is another saying that you would have found on certain bumper stickers. No God, no peace. You may want peace, but if you don't have God, you cannot have peace. Which is followed up by the next line in the bumper sticker that says, No God, K-N-O-W, no peace, K-N-O-W, right? If you know God, then you can truly know peace, right? How about this saying? Does this make sense? No justice, no peace. Well, it kind of depends on what side of justice you are standing on. If you are standing on the side of punishment, there's no peace for you, Right? You may be on the, on the side of the benefit of that justice, but if you are on the side of the punishment of that justice, there's no peace for you. So that, that statement right there is very questionable. No justice, no peace. Even the one before that is a little bit questionable, but it's because how do you know God? Sure, no God, no peace. K-N-O-W, K-N-O-W. That's true, but it's pretty much pie in the sky, right? Because it depends on what, where you're standing on, which side of justice you are standing on, whether you know justice or 
leading leads to you knowing peace, right? And truth be told, all of us are standing on the wrong side of justice, aren't we? All of us have done things wrong in our lives according to God's standards, according to our own standards. We are, we are on the judgment side of justice. Truth be told, we cry out for justice. No justice, no peace. But every time that we condemn others for being unfair or lacking justice, we condemn ourselves because if God were only justice, he could not but condemn and punish us. This is true. That's what's called guilt. Everyone has it. Every heart testifies to it. You can deny it all you want, whether you know Jesus or not. This is a blanket statement, and I stand by it. If people are truly honest with themselves, there is a sense of guilt. And I want to tell you that it it testifies to a truth. And the truth is that we stand guilty before the judgment bar, the justice of God. We're on the wrong side. We're on the blame side of justice. But look at Isaiah. And this is a wonderful passage for you to meditate on as we approach the Easter season, the Resurrection Day season. Isaiah 53. Look with me to Isaiah chapter 53. One of the two main places to go for reflections on the cross. It's all throughout the scriptures, all the sacrificial system too. Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22, however, should be your main staple, main focus when you're focusing on the cross in the Old Testament. Again, the whole Old Testament is about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 stand out. Look at verse 5. Speaking of Jesus, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And by his wounds, we are healed. So let me bring you just one more statement. Jesus knew justice. Jesus, our God of justice, stood on our side of that justice and took the blame for the justice that we owed. Jesus knew our justice. Jesus knew our sin, our guilt, bore the just punishment for our sin. Jesus knew justice so that we might know peace. Jesus knew justice, that we might know peace, that we might worship and love a God of holy justice and mercy. Let's sing this next song, which confesses our need of Jesus day by day. We can proclaim justice and we can say we need justice. In the midst of that, however, Jesus is the justice and the mercy that we need that leads us to peace with God and peace with one another. Let's slowly sing, meditating on the words of the song. I could not do without thee. O Savior of the lost, whose wondrous love redeems me at such tremendous cost, thy righteousness, thy power, thy precious blood must my only hope and comfort, my glory and my plea. I could not do without thee. I cannot stand alone. I have no strength for good. 
First verse one more time. I could not do without thee, O Savior of the lost, whose wondrous love redeemed me at such tremendous cost. Thy righteousness, thy Glory and plea is the blood of King Jesus shed for us, the righteousness of Jesus poured out on us, the tre treasure that King Jesus, you are to us. Forgive us for having lived for lesser things. Forgive us for our hypocritical cries of justice. Help us to become a people who prefer mercy. Reflecting a heart of God who is both justice and mercy and whose mercy even triumphs over the justice owed to me. In Jesus' precious name we pray.